morning from John Moore, uh, who sent me information that Dr. Zangari, a theoretical physicist, doing analysis of the satellite infrared data from the uh, Gulf of Mexico, identified a significant break in the normal genesis of the uh, Gulf of Mexico loop current, the energy that drives the escalator from the, the Gulf of Mexico to northern Europe, one of the main drivers of world climate. Uh, a major uh, damage has happened, a cataclysm caused by the British Petroleum oil leak. And by the way, that leak has not by any means been solved by the so-called cap on the riser, which is not connected to the well rupture at the ocean floor. Yes. Uh, good afternoon, Bill. I um, now uh, I'm speaking from Italy. Now uh, it's uh, 11 p.m. I begin my my work with the University of Colorado uh, that gave me um, the maps of uh, six satellites: uh, Topex, Jason, uh, Poseidon, Geosat, Follow On, Erosat, and Envisat. And, um, These are I, different satellites, in other words, that you're using in order to get access to the satellite yes. data over the Gulf. Yes. And um, uh, I check uh, the data with uh, my system of uh, calculus. Uh, this is SHT calculus. It's um, uh, a calculus based about the theory of categories, which I work since uh, 10 years. So um, after the checking of the data, I observed uh, a fracture in the loop current, which is um, one of uh, the most important components of the Gulf Stream, which carries the warm current into the Atlantic um, circulation of the Gulf Stream. The first uh, breakdown was about observed and checked by me on uh, uh, May the 11th. And um, um, it, with the, the formation of a big eddy clockwise. And um, the second event was uh, on June the 12th. And uh, it was only the beginning of a series of uh, breaking. Nowadays, uh, yesterday, I am observing now uh, about uh, eight eddies of the loop currents. So if they have just um, stopped the, the coming off of, uh, of the oil, I am continuing in um, observing um, a breaking down of the loop current. Now uh, you see there are, uh, these are complex um, physics. There are critical phenomena, unpredictable, because they are ruled by nonlinear equations. So, um, if uh, the loop current will, will be going, will go on to be fractured, to be broken, sorry for my English, uh, it may um, have a serious consequences of, on uh, the entire Gulf Stream, you know. This is very um, critical situation. This is um, a natural e e equilibrium uh, made up of currents of salinity or um, flora and fauna uh, of uh, the whole Gulf, and um, uh, maybe uh, irreversible compromise by about they they say about uh, one, more than one billion liters of uh, oil. That's, yes. So, uh, what, what, so what we're talking about is that the, the normal mechanism, which is very uh, sensitive, for making the Gulf current, which is one of the major timepieces for the whole world climate, not just the yes. North Europe, has now been disrupted. As you mentioned in an analogy you gave, if you had a, a small pool yes. and you started a current moving it around in the pool and then you poured in oil, the current moving that flow of 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 the water would stop. And in yeah. fact, what's happening is uh, the oil isn't stopped by any means. It's a lie with the collaboration of British Petroleum, the private army that's protecting them from getting access to the real data, and internal departments of the government and the interior department. And the fact is this is going to precipitate not enough energy to the escalator current that brings warm waters to Scotland, Northern Europe, and the world climate. And these systems are all connected worldwide 
And what you're saying is the escalator current is now dead. It is stopped. It is not going to go with enough energy to bring the warm waters to Europe. So it's immediately going to precipitate a massive decrease in warming climate to these parts of the world, and it's going to change the world climate now. So come get up. Yes. Many, uh, many people, many other physicists, and I don't know what government says because I am uh, I am in Italy. I don't know what what's the uh, the official position of the government and the BP, but. Uh, some um, some people think it will be restored the, the equilibrium naturally, but I say uh, it's impossible to predict what will happen. Only one percent of the oil is now reaching the surface, where most of the effects are immediately happening. But 99 percent is below, and the oil is vastly underestimated because it didn't just disrupt this oil at this pipe, thousands of feet below the seafloor. But we believe the receipts are two, five, up to 20 more miles away along a probable fault line, and they fractured the actual granite cap over yes. this giant basilisk of ancient abiotic oil. If uh, if the most part of the oil is underside, uh, it it will destroy and kill all the life because all the life will be uh, out of oxygen you know and um, there, there will be serious consequences so yes so, and 80 percent of the oxygen on earth is made in the upper 30 feet or 10 meters of the ocean the, the benthic layer so this is going to be cataclysmic uh, for the oceans not only in the gulf of mexico but as time goes on it will affect other oceans as well so you you can try an experiment of of yourself. You take uh, as um, as I was telling you, you take um, a swimming pool with um, a flux with a stream. You know, stream for a massage and so on. And you take um, a tank. A tank of oil. A tank of oil, and take it the oil in this. Water in the sea, water, and you will see the effects. You will see that the the action of oil will stop the flow of the current. So let's imagine how imagine what happened in the Gulf. Imagine a sort of a very delicate equilibrium, and the presence of nonlinear and critical phenomena. Those are complex physics. A mild winter has turned into an unrelenting freeze, bringing more than ice and snow to most of Europe. Hundreds have died from exposure as temperatures in the east have dropped below minus 35 degrees Celsius in some parts. Poland, minus 36 degrees. Outlook, snow, continuing through the weekend. The death toll in Poland has climbed to around 40 since temperatures plummeted a week ago. The victims, mostly the homeless or those sheltering in unheated buildings. Many schools are closed. Those who can are staying indoors. It should be getting warmer, but God only knows when. They didn't even predict winter, and you see what came? There wasn't supposed to be any snow, nothing. Serbia, minus 30 degrees in parts. Outlook, icy. Far from the snow-driven streets of Belgrade, some 11,000 people are trapped by severe weather in the remote mountains of Serbia. In the cities, the harshest winter in decades has caused power cuts and traffic chaos, forcing the closure of businesses and airports. Ukraine, minus 25 to 30 degrees. Outlook, cold. More than a hundred have died in Ukraine, with hundreds more being treated for frostbite and hypothermia. Nearly 3,000 shelters have been set up, bringing food and warmth to the homeless. Dangerously low temperatures brought Russian traffic and emergency services to a halt, while parts of the river Danube have frozen over in Romania and Bulgaria. The big freeze isn't confined to the east. In Brussels, the famous mannequin piss has frozen mid-flow. Snow has fallen on the Colosseum in Rome and the Eiffel Tower in Paris, though a bright winter sun shone on Friday. This sign in French reads, don't step on the ice. 
across much of Europe, there's no avoiding it. Jonah Hull, Al Jazeera.